This is a dynamic optimization of a catalyzed reaction. We're going to have a certain amount of A that goes to intermediate species B and then uh, finally to C. Now the issue with uh, this reaction is that one of these, the A goes to B, is also reversible. Okay, so we have two catalysts um, and this, uh, this first one is going to be catalyst one. Okay, so this is going to be U and then catalyst two is going to be one minus U. That's going to, U is going to be our decision variable, so it's going to be the fraction of catalyst one versus catalyst two. And so we set up a couple different species balances. Um, for our three components, um, now A is going to be X1, B, and then C, where you can do one, two, and three there. And so we have, um, this is going to be the uh, destruction of A going to B, and then this is going to be B going to A. Okay, so A goes to B, B goes to A. And then we also have here, um, we have the A goes to B, and so that's going to be a positive term there because you're producing more, more B. And then uh, this is the uh, B goes to A. And then you also have the B goes to C term right there. Okay, so whatever's left over in terms of the fraction, uh, we can just do one minus the uh, concentration of A minus the concentration of B, and that's gonna be the concentration of C right there. So we're gonna start off with just uh, pure uh, A. Now we probably wanna put just another zero there for our C concentration as well. Okay, we're gonna limit um, the, the mole fraction or the concentration fraction of catalysts uh, between uh, zero and one. So if you have uh, one, then that's going to be equal to this, um, you know, this catalyst that goes from B to C. Okay, now we have a couple constants here, a couple, um, you know, these kinetic constants right here. And so that's gonna be equal one, 10, and one. Okay, so this reversible reaction, that's 10. It means that a lot of that is gonna be going B going to A, that's a very fast reaction, okay? So we need to try to optimize the catalyst um, from uh, a time initial to a time final, okay? And we're, gonna, um, and we're gonna go ahead and set up this problem now, okay? So we'll use the uh, AP monitor modeling language, and uh, what we'll do is just go ahead and uh, set up this, you know, optimize it, uh, set up this optimization problem just like we have it listed here. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and um, define a couple parameters, a couple things that uh, are going to be fixed. Um, actually, I'm going to go back to my, my model file. Okay, so here's a couple parameters. Uh, P0, that's just going to be uh, to be able to define what is the last time point in the horizon. I'm going to have my U value. I'm going to just initialize it to a value of 1. It doesn't really matter what I initialize it to. Uh, and then it has to be greater than zero and less than one. The commas are optional there. K1, K2, and K3. And then I have a couple of variables as well. Uh, X1, X2, X3, I put in the initial conditions there. Um, and then I have some equations. Okay, so I wanna maximize P times X3. P is just my, it's just gonna be zero everywhere except on the very last point, it's gonna be equal to one. We'll set that up in the CSV file. Okay, and then we have our first differential equation. We're gonna have negative uh, U times uh, this quantity, K1 times X1 minus K2 times X2. Okay, then X2 is gonna be just a little bit longer. Uh, let me go ahead and, uh, okay, so we have the same thing, but just the negative sign of that. And then we have the B going to C as well. And then we have our final expression for C. Okay, so there's our model file right there. Now we wanna uh, construct a data file as well. Okay, so we have just our time values um, that we're going to have in here, time and then zero, and then I'm going to go all the way up to four. So that's going to be my final time. And then I have this parameter P, it's going to be zero everywhere, and then the very last time step is going to be one. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and save that as a CSV comma delimited file. Okay, let me go ahead and build my MATLAB and Python files as well. Um, okay, so I'm just going to separate this over to this other view just to split it. Okay, so left is going to be the Python. And uh, first of all, I want to just specify the server and application name. And then I want to import um, the AP Monitor uh, package. I'll show you the download for this as well. 
Okay, and then we're gonna clear any application by that name and then load the model file, which I named cat uh, or catalyst.apm. And then you have the catalyst.csv or cat.csv as well, the data file. Okay, so MATLAB, you just, I like to just clear all, close all plots and clear the screen and define the server application name. Um, I'm gonna add path to this APM folder and then go ahead and clear all, uh, load the model file and load the data file as well. Okay, back to Python now. We're going to uh, define a couple options. Nodes is the number of collocation points per time step. Again, more points, more accurate, but it takes longer to solve. Define the solver as um, number one. That's going to be the APOP solver. You can also use the IPOP solver if you set that to three. I mode uh, six, which is dynamic optimization. Uh, and then manipulated variable type is one, which is a, a, a first order hold. Zero would be a zero order hold. Okay, same thing here, uh, same options in MATLAB. Okay, Python again, I'm gonna define um, my U value, which was a parameter. Um, if you recall uh, this parameter U, right up here is between zero and one. Okay, I'm gonna turn that status to be on, which is gonna make it active or make it a degree of freedom in the optimization problem. Okay, same uh, options here, but just with the semicolon at the end in MATLAB. Okay, then I'm gonna solve it and uh, do that in both. Um, at this point, uh, it should uh, be uh, be solved, okay, but we're gonna add a couple things like print the output, okay, or and then also retrieve the solution. Okay, in MATLAB, it's display the output and then retrieve the solution. Uh, then the next thing we're gonna do is just display the optimal solution, okay, and there it is, um, and then we're gonna create a new figure. Okay, so in uh, Python, I've got to import uh, matplotlib and then create uh, this figure with these subplots. Okay, so these are just gonna be the results for the catalyst and then also the mole fractions for the three different components. And I'll do that same thing in MATLAB as well. Okay, so there are my plots. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this now. Um, I'll go ahead and um, uh, open it up and uh, I'll do Python first. Okay, so open up with IDLE and then run it. Okay, and then once it runs, it's gonna display this plot uh, to show the optimal application of the uh, catalyst over the uh, uh, time units of four. Uh, so it's gonna uh, run and then um, return the solution. Okay, and then as this is going, okay, so it took about 16 seconds uh, to solve, and then here is the optimal profile. So you can see it starts at one, and then it goes down to about 0.22, and then it goes down to uh, zero. Okay, and so you can see the um, optimal profile of A, and then B, and then also C. So you can see that C is slowly rising. We're trying to maximize the final quantity of C. So this is the optimal sequence of inputs um, that helps us to maximize um, the value of C. And so you can see the, uh, the, the optimal way to do this is to get the concentration of B up to about 0 0.05. Uh, the A is gonna steadily drop, um, and we're gonna convert the B to C as well. Okay, so that, um, that is in Python, and then let me just run this in uh, MATLAB as well. Okay, so this is gonna open up uh, MATLAB. I'll go ahead and close Python as this is uh, opening. And, um, okay, I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and then I'll also show you the web address where you can go ahead and download these files. Um, if you'd like to run it uh, or modify it as well. Okay, so MATLAB is going to open um, and uh, there is my MATLAB script. I'll go ahead and run it or I hit F5, uh, either the green button or F5. And uh, if you go back to the MATLAB console, then when it finishes solving, uh, the solution will turn up there with, or if you've made an error, uh, the error will also be reported there at the command window. Uh, so you can see, um, so you can see both uh, if it finished successfully or not. 
Okay, so there again is the solution. Okay, same solution that we had before in Python and this time in uh, MATLAB. Okay, I'll go ahead and post the files um, here on the Dynamic Optimization uh, website, apmonitor.com slash do. And if you scroll down, uh, we'll come to, uh, on, the, on the right, applications, there will be some more benchmarks. Okay, and so I'll post it right here where you'll be able to um, download the files in MATLAB and in Python.